So now we turn our attention to the elements of user experience, um, which comes from an excellent book written by Jesse James Garrett, who uh, is the founder of Adaptive Path, uh, a user experience firm out in, in San Francisco. He wrote a book called The Elements of User Experience, which is sort of widely regarded as, you know, the big picture book uh, on the subject. And, and it really is excellent. It goes a long way in sort of deconstructing um, user experience as a practice. So we are going to start there. There are five planes of user experience. And essentially what that means is that there are sort of five parts of making sure that, you know, no aspect of someone's experience uh, with a website, with a system, with an app happens without some sort of, um, you know, explicit intent. That means you've taken into account every possibility of, of all the different actions or different paths the user could take. You're, you're concerned with, you know, what their expectations are at, at sort of every step. Sounds like a big task and, you know, it most certainly is. But if you sort of look at all the individual parts of the whole, uh, it becomes a lot easier to tackle. Okay, so we're going to start there. The first plane is called the strategy plane, all right? And that means what it sounds like. The site, the system, or the app's reason for existing in the first place. You know, why you created it and why people, you know, are willing to use it or why they need it. The second plane is scope. And that is essentially the features and the functions that are contained uh, within the product itself. Next up is structure, which essentially is the number of places you can go organized in context of use, okay, of, you know, what is the person there to achieve, what are they trying to do, what are the possible paths they could take, uh, and how many options, you know, do we need to provide. If we go another level up, we now have the skeleton plane. On the skeleton plane, you have sort of an optimized organization and arrangement of all the elements that, that make up what happens on the screen. You have navigation elements, you have content, you have control elements, you have buttons you can click, you have menu options. The skeleton plane is all about figuring out how all those things work together, not only you know inside one screen, but across an entire system or an entire site or an entire app. Finally, we get to the surface, which is essentially the part that the user sees. Now we have visible pages, visible websites, visible application screens. We have images. We have text. We can see the things that we can click on. Um, we have interaction and animation. Okay, it's, it's all the point of contact. The surface area is really all about the visual contact that the person has uh, with the product. So the five planes sort of build upon each other from a strategic point where we start thinking about what are we doing, why are we doing it, who are we doing it for, all the way up to the surface plane, which is now we've got something that the user can actually see and interact with. These five planes are split down the middle into two uh, very distinct categories, okay? And that has to do with the nature of the web and the nature of, of software technology as a whole. On one hand, you have software, you have technology, and you have uh, an interface, right? A piece that you interact with, a piece that's largely contained with tasks. How does the user accomplish task A, task B, task C? Uh, how do they get the things uh, that they need? On the other side, the other side of the split is information, okay? What content do we offer? What, what information is being served up? And what does it mean to the people uh, that use it? On one side, there's a technology space. On the other hand, there's an information space. And there are components that exist in each one of those spaces. And that's what we're going to talk about, okay? We're going to make sense of this whole <laughs> ball of confusion that I seem to be creating. Okay, now as we said, the way this works is that each plane sort of builds on the next plane. So at a very abstract level, we have strategy. And at a very concrete level, we have the surface, the part that the user interacts with. On the strategy plane, we have two distinct things that span both tasks and information. And that is, number one, we have user needs. What are the things that people expect? What do they want? What do they need to be able to do, okay, when they use our product? You know, uh, what it is that the audience wants from us and, and how that sort of fits in with their other goals, 
uh, any other things that they may be doing. On the other side of the, of the fence, we have business objectives, okay? And business objectives are largely concerned with success metrics of some point. Again, back to the reason for being uh, of the site or the app. We're either trying to make money, save money, or gain something. You know, there's, there's some strategic objective that has to be met. So the strategy plane is all about the sweet spots between what users want from us and what we need to accomplish in order to, uh, to survive, to prosper. On the next plane, which is scope, we're essentially talking about two very discrete things. On the task and software side, we are talking about functional specifications, okay, which is essentially just uh, something that describes the features and functions of the product, right? What does it offer? Um, what is it able to do? On the other hand, in the information space, we have content requirements, all right, which essentially means what content is required, what information, what data, um, what needs to get served up that people can uh, manipulate, interact with. From there, we move on to the structure plane, which is also composed of two parts. On the software side, we're concerned with interaction design, okay? How does the system behave uh, when somebody does something? When I click on a link, what do I get? Am I taken to another page? Uh, do I get a series of interactive choices? Do I get streaming video? It's sort of the nuts and bolts of how I interact with what I have in front of me. Information architecture is essentially all about just that. It's the arrangement of content elements. It's the arrangement of information within that space, not just on every screen, okay, but throughout the entire site or the entire application. How much of it is there and how is it organized? How deep is it? If we move on to the skeleton plane, we have two components there as well. Interface design, which is the arrangement of all the elements that exist on the interface, right? The buttons, the menus, the tools, the controls, okay, whatever you want to call them, the things that enable us to interact with the functionality of the system. That's interface design. We also have navigation design, which is a critical, critical element, uh, particularly in terms of good user experience design, because navigation determines how the user moves through the information and how easily and how intuitively, how obviously. If I'm anywhere in the site, uh, I don't want to get lost, right? I want to know where I am. I want to know where I can go. And in a lot of cases, I want to know where I've been. That's what navigation design does. So finally, we get all the way up to the surface plane. And regardless of whether we're dealing with uh, concerns of, of pure software, pure task completion, or whether we're dealing with information presentation, visual design addresses both of those things, both planes, both aspects it's essentially the look of the finished product, right? What does it look like? What fonts are we using? What, what colors are we using? How does all that reinforce and support the information structure? How does all that reinforce and support our means of, of navigation, of direction, of feedback, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So those are sort of all the key components within each plane. And again, as we said, I want to reiterate this because I think it's important. This is what makes a product, okay, of any kind, a website, a system, uh, an application, right? No matter what it is, you're dealing with all these planes because you start at a very abstract level about what you're doing and why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. You go through these processes to the point where you have something concrete that people can actually see and touch and interact with, okay? Let's move on.